Hey everybody, this is Everyday Commentary. I'm just gonna go through and talk a little bit about these three knives and I'm gonna first tell you why I grouped them together and then uh, gonna just chat about them a little bit. So these three knives are from left to right, the Tactile Knife Company Rockwall, the American Blade Works uh, Model 1 Version 5, and the Sharp by Designs Micro Evo Version 2. I think one of these three knives is probably the best production or inexpensive non-custom flipper on the market. And all of these sort of challenge. This one's pretty much a straight up production knife, but it's by a very small company run by a guy named Will Hodges. He was the guy behind the tactile turn pens. And as you can see, that sort of uh, machine striations pattern has made it onto the tactile knife company Rockwall. This is really an unusual and difficult to classify knife. It's made by a single person um, and he does everything on the knife. So like, is it a custom? Uh, either way, it's super cheap. This one is the carbon fiber version, which is the more expensive version. It was $215. So it's the cheapest knife on the table. And then this one is what I call a designer produced blade. And what I mean by that is it's a knife designed in CAD by a custom maker and then produced by uh, a company, in this case, Rayot. And so this is designed by Brian Nadeau. It's based on his Evo design, which is a modification of the Typhoon. So the Typhoon Evo, and then this was the Micro Typhoon Evo version one, and that one had a stamped clip. This one has a sculpted clip. And then the version two, uh, it, like I said, went over the sculpted clip. And actually I find this knife to be uh, one of the better knives out there. So let's talk a little bit about why I like these knives. So they're all really good, easy to carry knives. As you can see, the Model 1 is the largest of these knives and it's still not gigantic. I mean, it's pretty big, but it's, you know, it's got some space beyond the back spacer. So like if you would just take the back spacer off, it would still be a bigger knife, but it wouldn't be like a full inch bigger than the rock wall. And this also has the biggest blade. It's a 3.25 inch blade. The other ones are, this one's three inches and this one's at 2.75 inches. But this is the reason why this knife is a superstar in my opinion. It fires like a rocket. And it's really hard to evaluate. You can see it's so hard that when I put my arm on the table, it kicks out. I mean, it just, uh, this is flipping with my arm on the table. And so, as you can see, it looks out with such authority that it shakes the whole table. None of these other knives are going to do that. Like, this one is not going to do that. Maybe, oh, maybe it did. Um, no, that knife has hardly any kick at all, but it's such a smooth. But this, this knife has a great detent, and it has insanely good flipping action. I love this knife. In fact... This knife reminds me more of an RJ Martin than just about any knife I've ever handled. And I've handled a bunch of RJ Martins. He lives actually in the same state that I live in. And so they're relatively common at the cutlery shows around here. And so, you know, this knife just has that really hard, hard, hard. I mean, like I can really preload before I pop it out. So those knife, this knife is a really good knife. It's pretty big. Um, and as hard as that knife flips, there is no knife that flips like this knife. And that is because it has what Brian Nadeau calls his ramped detent. So normally a detent, I'm gonna use my zip chip. Normally a detent is like a ball, bell bearing pressed into the metal. And what happens is there's a little indentation on the blade. And so it kind of like rides across, like say my finger is the detent, the de dent in the blade. And that's what holds the blade in while you're putting pressure on it and then you break the pressure and uh, lifts out and fires open. Nadeau's detent works a little differently. Instead of a, a ball, it's a ramp. And so what happens is you're going up, going up, going up, and then boom, it opens. And then when you're, the, the ramp on the other side is much shorter. So when you're going up, you just, and then it falls into place. So it actually has like a hook like this. So it just, and then when it pops out, it opens the knife that way. So the the ramped detent gives this such a crisp action. It's not hard. It doesn't fire hard, as you can see there. I mean, you can fire it hard if you want. But you can, you can get this knife open almost 
I mean, it is just incredibly smooth. There's bearings on the ramp detent. Here's the thing that makes this knife such a good flipper. It's, it's pretty much impossible to fail fire. I mean, I'm just barely putting pressure on this knife, barely. If it's enough to break the detent, the blade is gonna open. And even with a knife that fires this hard, you can you can get this one to fail fire if you there we go. I mean, that takes a lot of work. But so this knife always deploys. Always, always deploys. And that's a really great feature to have on a flipper. Now this knife doesn't have the the massive snappy detent of the model one and it doesn't have the guarantee to always open. But the thing that it does have is, I think this is the best size and shape flipper tab on the market. And you can see, it's really similar. This is actually pretty small compared to what it needs to be, or compared to what it is on the market. They kind of look like birds, don't they? Um, I mean, like that one's huge. See, like this is a Tweety Bird. <laughs> Um, but this is really just spectacularly well done. You can see there's a little bit of machining, but nothing offensive. It'll never screw up your finger. And it just comes out. It doesn't have a ramp detent. It has a detent ball. Let me see if I can get in there and show you. Right there. That's... Eh, I'll point it out with the blade tip. The thing that's catching the light, that's the blade detent. Um... Let's see if I can do it with this one. And there is the ramp detent. Um, but this is just a really great flipper in that it just feels awesome in the hand. I mean, all of Will's stuff feels great in the hand, but this stuff especially, and it always flips. Um, one of these three is my favorite flipper right now, under, you know, under $500. Well, you know, Tim Galen makes an amazing flipper and I've handled some of his custom stuff and I would put it probably above, above this, uh, you know, RJ Martin's stuff is really, really good. I like his detents, but I don't think they're substantially better than this one. I mean, they do have that like characteristic ping. He, he's figured out a way to tune the knife and get it nice and tight so that when it hits open, it just ting. It's a wonderful sound. So I'd probably put his stuff above these guys in terms of its flipping action. It's probably equal to this, but the whole knife flipping package is a little better. But besides that, I really think that one of these three knives is the best flipper on the market uh, for under $500. And they're all really good. So uh, you kind of can pick your poison and take whatever you want to be your favorite flipper. But instead of a little quick look at the um, my my favorite flippers in the market circa 2021